All right, so this is gonna be a serious video. We're still gonna have some fun, but we're gonna go through the thought process of how I build my competitive tribal Salvala Heart of the Wilds so that you can build your own versions of this. And we're gonna go through this, but don't forget, Salvala's baby pet, prowling serpapod. All right, so let's get right into it now. So how do we build around Selvala? So whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. Now Selvala's one and two green, so she's cheap for a green creature, and what she does is amazing. So pay one green, tap Selvala, and add X mana in any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So that is amazing, and we really like that. So how are we going to build around this? Can we build a tribal elf deck competitively? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. And the answer is yes, because we can add elves to our deck, okay? And the way we're going to do that is ramp elves. So we have Findhorn elves. There's some ramp, right? One and a green. So Findhorn will definitely go in. Now this is going to untap Selvala again and again. So we're going to definitely want Quirin Ranger, and it is an elf. Wirewood, that's more ramp. So we're going to add that. That's a good elf to add. The Leaf Crowned Visionary. Now a new one. This is an elf lord. Leaf Crowned Visionary. Other elves you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast an elf spell, you may pay one green if you do draw a card. And that's very good in green, that card draw. Get it as much as you can in green, my brothers and sisters. So... This is an elf and it is a spirit, and I don't know if it's an elf spirit or not. I, I, it isn't. I guess it's an elf, right? Elvish spirit guide. No, it's an elf spirit guide. But in any case, it's elvish. It has some elvish ancestry, I'm sure. If elvish spirit guide is in your hand, you may remove it from the game to add one green to your mana pool. Play this ability as an interrupt. So, basically, here you can exile elvish spirit guide. She's our little sad spirit guide that doesn't hit the battlefield but is just exiled for one green mana so that's definitely a, a good addition now ivy lane denison this is part of a janky combo where with another creature we'll actually set ivy lane aside to showcase that elvish piper now we are going to have some big creatures in here not many because there are a secret weapon we don't want a bunch of secret weapon we want people to think this may be See, sleight of hand, so to speak. Not necessarily sleight of hand, but wolf in sheep's clothing, as it were. Um, this will look like a tribal elf deck, but it isn't necessarily. That's why I say it is and it isn't. So Elvish Piper, for three and a green, you can tap one green and put a creature card from your hand into play. So that will cheat out creatures. Um, that is very... And it's an elf. So we have Ant Alanaware Elves. That's an important card, right? Because ramp. And uh, I'm showing you these elves before. This is uh, These elves are kind of in indicative of what our mana base is going to be. So here we have an important card. This is Survival of the Fittest on a Lady. So one green tap, discard a creature card. Search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Survival of the Fittest, one step back. One step. So it doesn't, if it had haste... Um, Gaia's Herald here. Creature spells can't be countered. So this is um, going to protect us in a way that, uh, let's see, I'll show you. Allosaurus Shepherd does. Um, so Allosaurus Shepherd can't be countered. Green spells you control can't be countered. And for four and uh, two green, until end of turn, each elf creature you control has base power and toughness five, five, and becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other creature types. That seems janky and silly, but because we have like 16 elves in here, it isn't, because if we do our big sweeping turn at the end, we can make every elf a 5-5. Five, five. Um, and I'll show you in other ways why that's a good thing. So these two, um, in addition to being great cards, creature spells can't be countered. Allosaurus can't be countered, and green spells can't be countered. And because this is a mono green deck, that's great. And again, with Beast Whisperer for our card draw, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So, there you go. And uh, with Selvala's uh, mana producing ability being um, counterproductive of the uh, the greatest power among creatures, Steel Leaf Champion for three green mana, Elf Knight 5-4, can't be blocked with creatures with power two or less. 
Man, we need that in here, right? And look at that. He's riding that thing. Holy moly. Holy moly. We got the wild born preserver. And look at, she's riding that thing. That's crazy. So flash, one and a green. So you get flash, reach. Whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do put X, one, one counters on wild born preserver. And in a way, we could say that X, X is going to be a very important role in this deck too because we're generating infinite mana. But what to do with it, right? So Elvish Pioneer is just one green, one, one elf with awesome artwork there. Love that. Harkens me back to like Hylians from the old Zelda days in the early 90s. My kid imagination thinking about the Hylians. That looks just like a Hylian to me. When Elvish Pioneer comes into play, you may put a basic land card from your hand into play tapped. So that's amazing. And Llanowar Tribe, the fairest card in magic. So three green, tap and add three green, and it's three, three. So there's our elves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I guess we have fifteen, sixteen, seventeen elves. Maybe sixteen. We're dubious about our suicide fairy here. So those are our elves. Now let's talk about the mana base. So we have a lot of ramp there, right? And Salvala creates ramp. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there's an artifact land because it's key. Eight, command tower. You know what? I'm sorry. We'll just go through these. Um, so basic forests. Here. Okay, wirewood's not basic. All right, and I think that's, yeah. Okay, so for basic forest, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And then for utility lands, we have Wirewood Lodge. So tap, add one to the mana pool, pay a green, and untap target elf. And we know who we're going to be tapping. We're going to be tapping her at game night. Ooh, yeah. Tap. Ooh. Um, hey. <laughs> wow. Salvala. Um, all right, forget about that. Wirewood Lodge. So yeah, we can untap Selvala because we'll be tapping her. <laughs> command Tower, tap, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. So it's, it's Command Tower, sure. Command Beacon, add one colorless and sacrifice Command Beacon, put your command or into your hand from the command zone. Way to get around that command tax. So yeah, pretty simple stuff. 26 lands, but with all that ramp, we're going to be making so holy moly. All right, we're going to put you there. So in addition, um, Salvala needs support creatures, right? And one of my favorite support creatures for her is the Prowling Serpapod. Because it can't be countered. It's a 4-3 for 3. So we're getting that extra bit of power. Um, creature spells can't be countered. Um, that's very good. Um, very good. Very good. Very nice uh, pet for Salvala there. Dryad Arbor is a land creature. So it's a 1-1 one, one that thinks it's a land. But um, that's amazing early game because as you see, it has no casting cost. And uh, Wirewood Symbiote. Return an elf you control to its owner's hand and tap target creature. So that's why we got a lot of elves so we can untap Salvala. That's all it's all about. Sheltering Ancient, it's a one in a green for a five five. We've got a cumulative upkeep. We don't care about that. We care about getting that early quick mana to tap Salvala and get a lot of mana, right? It's just like Scrib Ranger, Flash, Flying, Protection from Blue. It's one in a green. Return a forest you control to its owner's hand and tap target creature. Play this ability. So untap Salvala, get that infinite mana. And then we're gonna have these X creatures that we're gonna be able to pay that into. <clears throat> now, Phyrexian Soul Gorger, Snow Artifact, Cumulative Upkeep, Sacrifice a Creature. We're probably not going to ever do that. It's an 8 8 for 3, so that's instant 8 mana. Boom. Love it. Got an Ewit. Ewit, Eternal Witness, which looks so much like an elf. Why can't you be an elf? You look like an elf. You're covering up elf ears under your turtle helmet. I know it. Eternal Witness. When Eternal Witness enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. And I know what everybody's thinking, and it is Kogla the Titan Ape is on board. 
Augur of Autumn. Look at the top card of your library anytime. Play lands from the top of your library. That's good. It's giving us control over our library. As long as you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. That's super powerful. Especially when we're generating infinite mana. Speaking of infinite mana, a great commander in his own right, and the paramour of Salala. We have Omneth, Locus of Mana. You don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. So when we make infinite mana, we'll have it on board. Omneth, Locus of Mana, gets plus one, plus one for each unspent green mana you have. So he's going to be huge. The mana, the weird, the burr. Green spells can't be countered. And we're going to certainly want to be swinging in with some big creatures. Vigilance, Death, Touch, Haste. So for two and two green, we get Questing Beast. With these three attributes, which are very great. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. And combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control cannot be prevented. No Teferi. No Fog. Whenever Questing Beast deals damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. So whenever you sweep in with like a Storming Stomp, go ahead and play a Questing Beast in a deck like that. Just so you can hit everybody. You want to knock everybody out. You don't want a straggler. And anybody trying to stop this damage, questing beast. Keep going through here. Oh, heard Bailoth. We'll hold up the show here. So what does this say? Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield into your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. So this is in there. We cast Herd Bailoth. We have infinite mana, right? So whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Herd Bailoth, create a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. So another green creature enters the battlefield, right? So we're going to put that counter on here. We're going to create a beast token, 4-4. Four, four. A green creature enters the battlefield. Put a plus one plus one counter here. Plus one plus one counter. A beast token enters the battlefield. Plus one plus one counter. Beast token enters the battlefield. Plus one plus one counter. Beast token enters the battlefield. Now, I was going to do that for like five minutes to bug you guys, but I said I'm going to be serious, so I'm not. But yeah, infinite beast tokens, and we have a, a haste enabler, so that would be good for us. And uh, speaking of haste, trample haste. Five and uh, two green, transform Alvinwald oddity. And transform can be done with summoning sickness. So if this hits the battlefield, this doesn't need to have, I mean, I, it does have haste, true, but you can transform it like immediately so hit the battlefield and transform it so with our infinite mana we can transform it and other creatures are going to get plus one plus one and have trample and haste so that is going to be powerful for us because when we storm the board as you see we're going to we'll want to have that haste and we want to get a few abilities to give it to us teamer's saber tooth man do i love cats or what razza cats right leonin oh leo i love you leo leonin relic warder but i do love me cats don't i Teamer Sabretooth, creature, cat. So for two and two green, you can pay one and a green, and you may turn another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, Teamer Sabretooth gains indestructible until end of turn. So with our infinite mana, we can bounce many things back to our hand. But pretty much, it's all going to lead to untapping and tapping. Now here's a fun card. Nessian Boar. So for three and two green, we get a 10-6. And all creatures able to block Nessian Boar do so. Whenever Nessian Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. What do they draw it with? Like a marker or a crayon? <laughs> All right. So Pathbreaker Ibex. Pathbreaker Ibex is four and two green. And whenever Pathbreaker Ibex attacks, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And I'm telling you guys, X is going to be pretty bang, bang, big. There's Kogla. Okay, we know what Kogla does. A good commander in his own right, even though he's six mana. When Kogla the Titan Ape enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Whenever Kogla attacks, target... Ugh, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. And for one and a green, return target human you control to its owner's hand. Eternal Witness. Kogla gains indestructible until end of turn. Very nice. And a very nice full art. All right. So what are these big creatures we'll be searching out with our huge stack of interaction and tutors and enchantments here? Impervious Great Worm. So for seven 
Three green, you get a 16-16 that our creatures can help us cast. And it's an indestructible 16-16. <laughs> the ultimate answer to intrigue and subtlety for all Timmies! But yes, this is going to do it. Because remember our Pathbreaker, like Craterhoof Behemoth before it. Whenever Pathbreaker Ibex attacks, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Very nice. Even though we're going to have X creatures, it's going to have huge power. Anyways, still, we got Galta Primal Hunger because it's a dino. Galta Primal Hunger costs X, S to X less to cast where X is the total power of creatures you control. And you know we're casting this for two mana. All right. So here's the secret pets of the elves. This is what makes the deck really rock and roll, brothers. These X cost creatures. So we have these Hydras here. We have one, two, three, four, five. Just five Hydras. That's all. Just five. So for removal here, we got a two and two green. We got a five, five. And for Monstrosity X, if this creature isn't monstrous, let's make it that way, right? When Polycranos World Ache Eater becomes monstrous, it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures your opponents control. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power. To Polycranos. So, bing! What can X be? X can be the whole board, buds. So let's do that. <laughs> we have Primordial Hydra. Enters the battlefield with X111 one, one, one counters on it. And in the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on Primordial Hydra. When Primordial Hydra has trample, as long as it has ten or more plus one, plus one counters on it, and it will. And it will. In early game, let's say you... Bring this out for four mana, just getting a little dodgy, you know, get Selvala out. When you get her out and can use her on your next turn if you don't have haste, you'll have the mana. You see, this will grow every time. Double those counters, even if you're not paying an X cost. So that's a good Hydra to have. Genesis Hydra. When you cast Genesis Hydra, reveal the top X cards of your library. Put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle the rest into your library. Genesis Hydra enters the battlefield with X, 1-1 one, one counters on it. So we can actually go through the deck and then reshuffle it again. And get exactly what we're going to need with that. The Broodmaster. So this one is a 4 and 2 green. And the monstrosity is uh, going to be when Hydra Broodmaster becomes monstrous, put X, 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 green Hydra creature tokens onto the battlefield. And this is just a sweeping... <laughs> it's a chef's kiss, as it were. Mist Cutter. Can't be countered. Haste. Protection from blue. Mist Cutter Hydra enters the battlefield with X-1-1 one, one counters on it. And this is the Hydra. This one, that's kind of the golden Hydra in the deck because that protection from blue is a beautiful thing. So there is our creature base, right? What did we go through? We went through creatures. Now we're going to look at enchantments. And just to hold up the show right here, some different elves that could go in, but I don't feel the need for them in here. Is uh, Dwinen, okay, for two and two green. Reach, other elves get one, one, so you got a lord. Whenever Dwinen guilt leaf attacks, you gain one life for each attacking elf. A well wisher might be good if you want to gain life for the long game. But then again, this deck's not really designed for the long game. Tap this, put a plus one, plus one on each elf creature for each elf you control. Or on target creature for, I'm sorry, jeez. Okay, tap, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature for each elf you control. And it's three and a green, which is steep to me. And we don't really care about counters so much on our elves. Now, the Imperious Perfect. Okay, other elf creatures you control get one, one. So it's a lord. And then for a green, you can put a one, one green elf warrior creature token into play. Not bad. There's a lot better elves. These are just some food for thought. Now, this one is the one that could almost go in there good. Create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token for each elf you control. That could be in there. And uh, honestly, I do run these in there too. Sometimes I take them out though. I have them out right now. But uh, I like to keep one of these in here most of the time. And then this one sometimes. But it's such a... Ugh, when you get it, turn one. It's like... Kind of makes the not playing fun. And then people say the deck's like definitely competitive. And then if you're playing casual, people think you're a, a Goomba. You know what I mean? 
But the biggest portion of this deck is interactions. So look at that. And what do we have for our interactions? We have Sorcery, a Road of Return here. And uh, choose target permanent card from your graveyard, bring it to your hand, put your commander into your hand from the command zone. So that's if, you know, Selvala is going to be a target. Green Sun Zenith, we're going to search our library for a card. Now Land Grant. This should be in any deck running green. It's free. This means you have 98 cards in your commander deck. Plus, you know, with not including the commander. If you have no land cards in hand, brothers and sisters, you may reveal your hand instead of paying land grants mana cost and search yonder library for a forest card and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Love it. This card is amazing. I don't need to explain why. I think it speaks for itself. Got the recovery here, the Balaged recovery. It's a land and it can return target card from your graveyard to your hand. We don't know what this card is, but... People are terrified of it. If somebody can interpret and tell us what this does. It's Finale of Devastation. We know what it does. And this is our one of our game-winning pieces. So just in case we don't know, we search our library with converted mana cost X. And other creatures get the... Uh, I wish I had it written down. I got, it, I got a little paper with what this says exactly on it. But it's Finale of Devastation. So you search out something like Impervious Great Worm. Put it on the battlefield. And all creatures get whatever its mana cost is, plus one, plus one counters, and gain trample until end of turn. So that's what that does. It's a, it's a finisher. I used to have it memorized. Tsunami. All islands in play are destroyed. So this is here is like a bomb. If we get countered too much and get crabby, we can go, well, you know what? Tsunami this. And then that gets countered, and we look like a fool. But... Even more important than a Finale of Devastation in here is Triumph of the Hordes. Until end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain Trample and Infect. And honestly, it's that Infect on those X creatures that's winning us games. Finale of Devastation is great. When I can remember what it says, I know, I know. Kingdom of Jank. I've been playing different decks. I haven't played this one in a little bit. But uh, Triumph of the Hordes. Until end of turn. I mean, look at that. That Infect, that's what's killing everybody. It's just 10 infect damage. They lose the game, man. Woo. Genesis Wave. Reveal the top X cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all cards revealed this way that weren't into the battlefield, into your graveyard. So, this is going to be important to us. However, I can't stress enough, this does cause funny interaction with some of our X cost creatures, making them kind of useless. So, this is good to like get something if you need it, but use it carefully. This belongs in the deck, but use this wisely. Soul's Majesty, draw cards equal to the power of target creature you control. So, whoop, fill our hand and cast it all with infinite mana, right? Soul Ring, of course. Look at that. Beautiful. Umbral Mantle. This is some of the, the Selvala accoutrements. Quip Creature has pay three. Untap. This creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Equip cost is zero. This is great because it's an infinite tap on tap ability for Selvala. As long as we have that extra mana, we can keep generating. So just another one to generate, like Staff of Domination. So we can untap Staff of Domination. An untapped target creature. Very important in our... So, for one, untap Staff of Domination, right? Pay three. Tap target creature. Or, I'm sorry, untap target creature. So, we can do this ability again and again with Selvala. Because we'll have that much mana to spare. And then every time we're getting that extra mana. So, that's going to be an infinite mana generator. Worldly Tutor. A tutor in green. Go find that creature. Get that vampiric tutor fashion, right? In green. We don't have to even lose the life. We just have to reveal. Nature's Claim. It's a destruction. You're going to see a lot of these destroy artifact or enchantments. Vitalize. Untap all creatures. Cannot stress enough. Very important. Giant Growth. So turn two, you've cast Selvala. Turn one, via Jeweled Lotus. Turn two, Selvala gets plus three, plus three, generating you three extra mana on top of her mana generation. 
So, pardon me. Um, Crumble is uh, another instant for one green. Berry target artifact. Artifacts controller gains life points equal to target artifacts casting cost. Perfect. Ram through. For one and a green, this is removal. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. You can cast this on your big XX guys. And uh, when they have trample, it's going to go through and you can knock somebody right off the hammer, boy. So that's very good. Heroic Intervention. Permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Say no more. Regrowth. Bring any card from your graveyard to your hand. Sure. Crashing Vines. Destroy target creature with flying or destroy target artifact. Some removal. Beast within. We know this card. Give him a beast. How about a beast? You got a commander? How about a beast? Destroy that permanent. How about a beast? Guy's Cradle? How about a beast? How about a beast? How about a beast? A beast? A beast? Invigorate. If you control a forest, rather than play, pay Invigorate's mana cost, you may have an opponent gain 3 life. Target creature gets plus 4, plus 4 until end of turn. Perfect, right? So for free, we can give a creature 4-4 four, four and then get more mana from Salvalo. Weird Harvest. Each player searches his or her library for X creature cards, reveal them, and put them into his or her hand. Then each player who searched his or her library this way shuffles it. And we don't care, because they won't get to use those anyways, right? What do we got here? Court of Calling. Convoke. Search your library for a creature card for converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Pretty straightforward. Carpet of Flowers. Everything running green, you better run it. During your main phase, you may add up to X mana of one color to your mana pool, where X is the number of islands target player controls. Somebody always does. Right here is a wonderfully underrated card. So it's still energy. For one green, you can enchant creature. You may untap target creature one additional time during your turn. Target creature may also attack this turn. It comes into play. Haste enabler, untap enabler. Oh, Salvala loves it. Helix Pinnacle. We know this. This is showing up a lot because we are having the most awkward wins with this. So it has Shroud. <laughs> and then for X, we can put X tower counters on Helix Pinnacle. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more tower counters on Helix Pinnacle, you win the game. So around she goes. When it stops, nobody knows. Who can remove it? Remove it. Get rid of it. Oh, you can't? So we go all the way around and uh, I win. It's so awkward. Concordant Crossroads. All creatures have haste. Why not? Now here's the fun ones. Enchant creature, and by creature, usually commander. When a transformation enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature loses all ability as an elk creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. Aspect of Mongoose. Enchanted creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. When Aspect of Mongoose is put into a graveyard from, from play, return Aspect of Mongoose to its owner's hand. We sure will. Lignify. Ooh, look at this. For one and a green, Enchanted Creature is a 0-4 Tree Folk with no abilities. Hey, that's what I am, kind of. I have two abilities. I can uh, do a couple things, but uh, I'm kind of like that guy. I'm Bulgo. Oh, what was that? All right, Song of the Dryads. The meanest, meanest card in Commander, in my opinion. Enchant Permanent. Enchanted Permanent is a colorless forest land. What do you do if you have an important Commander... And Song of the Dryads is done on it. And you can't stop it. If you can't stop it, what do you, what are you going to do? It's terrible. Just so mean, but so fun. By that, we love it. Elemental Bond. Just keep us drawing those cards when those creatures enter the battlefield. Because we want to always be drawing. So, this is the state of it. I've done the numbers. And if you made this deck yourself without the Lotus Petal, well, you know... Let's say with the Lotus Petal. Let's say without Jeweled Lotus. So if you made it with the Lotus Petal and without Jeweled Lotus, I'm looking at like 385. So I'd make a deck like this. And uh, 
I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it because this deck is, I would say it's like high power casual. However, it does walk that borderline. And I play it a lot. Like when I go and like, I'm like, man, eh, I'm sick of playing these same decks. I'm going to try this one. This one always performs. So build one like it. I mean, use the X cost creatures. Uh, Finale of Devastation is good. Crater Hoof. Just very fun. And uh, I also find, like, bringing new people over to Commander, this deck is very easy to explain to them. They love it, and they love it. And uh, if anybody in the comments puts banana hands, banana hands, who in the comments puts banana hands, they'll get a special surprise video. So put banana hands. Banana hands, banana hands, oh, banana hands. Good night, John.